Well, first of all, thank, uh, thank you for joining me. I'm Zia Charma. I'm based in Munich, Germany, and I'm going to show to you how to go beyond simple translation in STL Trotter Studio. Um, before the training, I actually installed some um, plugins from our app store. For example, the SDL Trotter's Business Manager Lite that allows you to create quotes and invoices directly from Studio. And you can also enhance Studio to be able to do sub, uh, subtitling translations. Um, those have very special requirements. For example, um, subtitles shouldn't exceed a certain length, not too many words per second. Otherwise, uh, movie watchers will have a hard time reading the subtitles. So I downloaded those uh, plugins directly from our app store to save time. So everything is installed. But before I go to this, I would like to create a project and show to you how to use the business manager light to create quotes and invoices directly from studio. So let me first of all, select those four files. I open them and I'm going to create a local project out of them. Okay, and I should also select uh, a template. Let me just see what kind of templates I have. Um, yeah, this one should be all right. Template training, English to German. Okay, and I will give a name to um, the project, Expo Lingua Test. Not very imaginative, but it should do. And I'm going to click Finish to create project. And the plugin SDL Business Manager is watching in the background for any new projects that I created. So it notices, okay, the user has created a new project and you can create directly an invoice and or a quote. Well, since I haven't done any translation work, I think it's not fair for me um, to create an invoice. So let me click on create a quote. So based on the project analysis, Studio will put together a quote directly. And here I just have to select a customer. So I pre-configured Studio to have one or two test customers. Let's take this one. Then I'm going to select a currency. Okay, I prefer to be paid in Euro. And well, that's basically it. Based on the analysis and the pricing scheme, Studio has calculated the number of net words and well, more importantly, the amount in euros. And yeah, here I see the amount that I'm going to make and I'm going to print this quote just to show to you what you're going to send to the customer because this one is just a studio view, but the print view, well, looks a bit nicer if it comes up. So this is roughly the quote. You can customize this. Uh, I don't have to mention that here you would have to, uh, your address, your VAT ID, maybe your logo and so on. So this is the default layout, but this can be fully customized to reflect your corporate identity. And you can print this out or forward it via email. I'm just going to close it because I wanted to give you a quick idea of what quote generation um, looks like in Studio. Once the customer has approved, here you can see prepare, send, and let us assume the customer has accepted it. Then I set the accepted flag and I can save and close. Now I will start to do a little bit of translation work. So let me go to uh, the four documents and I'm going to open them all for translation in the background. And as I said, I'm not going to translate this now. I'm assuming you more or less know how to translate in Studio. I just want to show you maybe a few things. You see that terminology work usually pays off very nicely um, because I have a term base in the background that allows me to retrieve all the uh, um, approved terms. So, Configuration. Okay, this is a rough translation. I don't really need to translate this in a polished way. I just wanted to point out that you can 
put the terminology recognition to good use. And in this case, I have a term dialog box. And in my term base, it's pointed out that this synonym is forbidden, so you shouldn't use it. You should rather use uh, dialog felt, which is an approved term. So in the terminology recognition window, you can exactly see which term to use and which one not to use. Studio can also track whether you're using the right terminology. So when I go to my project settings, I go to verification and you might have already seen the terminology verifier. I've already pre-configured it to look for any words or well terms that are found in the translation that either have the status obsolete or not allowed. I would like to provoke the system just a little bit. Um, for example, in menu extras. So this should be a term from the term base. Um, wählen Sie Optionen aus, um das Let's Provoke by inserting the forbidden term, um das Dialogfenster Optionen zu starten. Okay, now I'm just confirming the segment and immediately I'm getting a warning. Sorry, this is the wrong usage of the term dialog fenster. This term has been marked as forbidden. So let me quickly replace this with the allowed term and then I reconfirm and immediately I see that this warning is gone. Uh, oh, and I've forgotten, by the way, the formatting. So I could use, for example, the buttons B, I, U, but there's a new feature in Studio 2021 that I would like to test, auto formatting or auto insertion of tags. So let me right click and you see a new command that was added in Studio 2021. So it's a brand new feature. And when I click this icon, you see miraculously the words are formatted correctly. Let me do this again, it is so nice. So rather than going from uh, string to string and apply formatting manually, you can use control alt insert and studio is using artificial intelligence in the background to insert the correct formatting tags. By the way, this works with a memory that has a few thousand sentences. So if you're starting with a new memory that just has a few dozen segments, it will not work because the artificial intelligence needs some data to ascertain which uh, terms exactly to apply formatting to. And I was stating I'm inserting formatting tags because by default, you're not seeing the formatting tags, but they are there in the background. So those were some highlights that I wanted to show to you. I'm not going to translate everything. I think um, you can imagine how the translation job goes. Now, just imagine I've finished uh, my project. So everything is at 100%. Yeah, just imagine for um, the sake of argument. Now it's time to turn back to the business manager to create an invoice. So I did a quote. And after my hard work, I can also click on the button create invoice and just click OK to generate the corresponding invoice. Again, I have to select my test kunde, my customer. I have to select my favorite currency. By the way, all of this can be customized and expanded upon. So if it's for you, British pound sterling, if it's rather yen, or the Chinese renminbi, or maybe even Bitcoin, who knows? Uh, you can select your preferred currency. Of course, the invoice is matching exactly um, the amount from the quote. I think that's logical. And then you can generate the invoice or print it. So I'm just showing to you the print preview. The default template, like for the quote, is, well, uh, just the skeleton invoice, you could say with some uh, filler text like thank you for your business. 
Of course, you might want to add uh, notes on the VLT, your logo, your corporate coloring, and so on. But I think you're getting the idea. So those are the two main functionalities of the Business Manager Lite plugin, uh, which is added once you have installed the plugin. So you have a dedicated Business Manager view. So Studio itself becomes a quoting and invoicing environment in addition to, um, okay, I think my picture was just frozen, but now I'm moving my lips again, in addition to just a translation environment. I have a few other things that I would like to show to you. So let's go back to the welcome screen. And in this case, I would like to um, turn your attention to Trados Life. Okay. Some of my projects have a blue cloud icon. Some have the traditional, well, yellowish uh, gray icon. So this Expo Lingua test, this is a traditional local project. So everything is stored here on my local folder. The cloud projects, however, are, as the name suggests, created in the cloud. You can create them from Studio or, well, from the web browser. And they have this blue cloud icon. I'm showing you one of the cloud projects. There is one document, the quality management system. Let me open it for translation. The document is then in the background downloaded from the cloud to my local PC. It's a bit like, well, imagine you have Dropbox and you drag and drop files from Dropbox or from OneDrive to your PC. And then you can edit the files um, on the local PC. Okay, here it's saying opening quality management system doc. So the download from the cloud will now take some time. I hope I'm still having a good connection because for my hunch, it's a bit too long. Yeah, but definitely what are the um, advantages of having things in the cloud? I think you know the adage from your photos that you're shooting on your iPhone or tablets. Uh, you also know this from other um, applications that you can use basically any device to access your data. So if your PC gets lost or stolen, the data is still safely in the cloud. Okay. I don't know what about my connection at this time. Let me choose an alternative, yeah. Um, you can work in the cloud from studio. This is what I actually wanted to do now, but alternatively, you can also go to a web browser. So this part of the demonstration, I could just as well do on an iPad or on a Mac computer. Um, so this is the same document. And as you can see here, um, you can open in studio or open in what we call the online editor. Okay, in the browser, it's open directly. So imagine you're on the road, you don't have your PC with us, you just have um, either access from an internet cafe, if those still exist, and you can log in to this website, or you can take your um, um, a tablet, and you have full access to um, the cloud-based document. So it uh, looks just like Studio, yeah, with the side-by-side -side view. And if I expand the windows on the right-hand side, this is the equivalent of the translation memory window. It just shows any lookup results from the translation memory. It shows things from the term base, and it's also linked to a cloud-based machine translation system. For example, I see some editing is required. Because why does it say in this fuzzy match elektronisches Qualitätsmanagement system? It just says quality management system in English. So I do some editing and confirm using control and enter. And I can go on. So I see that some segments have been pre-translated using a neural machine translation engine. And some have been pre-translated using the 100% match from the tr translation memory. Okay, so I do some post editing. And I would like to show you one nice thing. So let me just 
collapse the window on the right hand side and do a preview. So even if you don't have Word or PowerPoint installed because you're in a web browser, you can still do the preview directly in the web browser. So this is the Word based preview. And when I want to make a change, so I'm missing something and you see myself typing and it's so interactive that while you are typing, um, you see the changes interactively in the preview. And once you are done, yeah, all you need to do is close the document using a cross icon. You don't even have to save anything because all changes are saved interactively while you are typing, uh, like in Google Docs. Let me quickly go, oh, okay, for some reason, yeah. In the meantime, it has downloaded in Studio. I think I was just being a bit too impatient. So I just wanted to show to you uh, that once you are back, for example, in your hotel room and you have your PC and you're connected via the internet with your PC, you can also take the document that you edited on the road in um, the browser and you can continue working with it in Studio. Okay, I will give it some time. Actually, uh, it seems to take some time to download. I just want to show you one or two things in a web browser. So, the terminology that I'm using is also available in the cloud. So you can take any device with a browser and you can, for example, open the term base to do some editing if required. For example, if you don't like this term, Lime control system, um, you know it should be Lime steuer system. And you interactively save it to the cloud. So that way you can respond virtually from anywhere, anytime to customer requirements. The same is true for your translation memory. So for the first time ever, thanks to Travis Live, you can check on your translation memories directly in the cloud. Yeah, for example, this one, if I do a maintenance, so I see my translation units and I can, for example, filter, for example, I can say, uh, show me all um, the units that contain a particular term like um, safety. So for the first time ever, you can do lookups in TMs directly from the web browser. Yeah, and let me go back to studio. I think in the meantime, it has, well, it is still downloading the document. Okay, give it a few seconds. Usually it's a bit faster, of course, I'm saying this, but nevertheless, um, yeah, now I think it's slowly opening in Studio. And from Studio, you then have access to exactly the same resources that you um, looked at in the web browser, the TM and the terminology. It goes without saying that term bases can also be shared with other people. So for example, if you're not working alone on a project, you need somebody else and you need this somebody else to be able to access uh, the, your term base, you can also share it. You can assign permis permissions. So anyone with the link can manage the term base or anyone with the link has read only access to the term base. Then you can also set an expiry date. So when you say my project is supposed to end on the 6th of April, you can set an expiry date and generate a link for your colleague or colleagues who need to be working on the project at the same time. Okay, you can copy the link to the clipboard and send it over to your colleagues. Okay, honestly, um, yeah, this is a live demo. So things sometimes go wrong, sorry for that. So I'm trying to cancel. So here you can see how realistic things are. Yeah. I'm going to cancel this because I think you can imagine what the same document looks like in Studio itself. There's one last thing that I want to show to you, subtitling. So 
it's more and more common for people to say, hey, can you please subtitle this video or this movie for me? And with studio by default, yeah, you can do this, but you are a bit limited in so far as some features are concerned. Um, I'm going to show you one subtitling text. So this is what a subtitling text looks like. And it's, well, plain text. This is what makes it easy. No text, no formatting, it's really plain text. But um, the big challenge here are the time codes. So in the subtitling text file, you find the time codes and the segment you will be safe here. It goes from yeah, um, the ninth second to the 10th second. And one of my customers told me we recently translated all the segments, but then the customer says the time code, it doesn't fit. And then they had to manually change the time codes. For example, in German, it was um, 10, second 10 to second 11. You can imagine it's not the most exciting job in the world because you need to watch the movie. And while you're watching the movie, you need to take a stopwatch and um, clock um, the German translation accordingly. So this is not fun. This is even um, more work than the translation itself. But once, okay, I think something is off with my cloud connection at the moment. Let me just go to the subtitling Spider-Man file. I'm opening for translation and show you how much more easy it can get when you have the subtitling plugin installed. By the way, I am working on a Mac computer, but I'm running um, Studio on a virtual version of Microsoft Windows. So when I do a pure Trados live demo, yeah, here I can use a Mac, but when I need to use Studio, I have to have a Windows uh, installation. Either it's a bootcamp or VMware or Parallels, which I'm using, but I need to have an underlying Windows system. And the good thing is that the subtitling plugin opens or rather adds two kinds of windows. Yeah. So I'm activating them here. In this window, you can see yeah, the time codes. And in the other window, you can play the movie itself. It's not going to do this on my Mac because on my virtual machine, I'm missing some graphic driver. But as you can see, you can have a slider to move from frame to frame or from scene to scene. Yeah, so you can select the movie file. As I said, I can't uh, play it here on the virtual Windows machine because I'm use, uh, missing some graphic driver. But still, I can show you the following. So I'm going to the subtitling data and I have the first um, segment here. You're going to stay with your aunt and uncle for a while and I can start translating. Do, must, and please observe the numbers here on the right-hand side. There are lots of numbers, I know that. But while I'm typing, du must noch, observe this, CPL. This value says characters per line. And CPS means um, characters per second. So there are limits. Uh, when I continue typing, du must noch ein wenig Zeit mit Tante, did you see that? So character per line uh, is in this case a maximum of 39. I know this because I configured it in my project settings. There is a new verifier called the Studio Subtitling Verifier where you can say there must be a maximum number of characters per line because if the line is too long, people can't read it, the text is cut off. And you can also have values for like um, characters per second. You know, how many characters per second are permissible? Characters or words per minute, you can also configure. I didn't do that in order not to make it too complicated. 
Äh, du musst noch, okay, das ist ein duplicated word, ein wenig Zeit mit Tante und Onkel ähm, verbringen. And here you see that I'm way out of line here. It's 59 um, characters in one line and it's far too broad. Yeah. So that's really too much. So what do, do you need to do here? Um, you need to, um, you need to um, put this into two different lines by using control and enter. Because when you go to the subtitling preview, you know, there is a risk that uh, the text will be cut off. I'm going to exaggerate now a bit. So let me enter, um, use control enter. You see how the text breaks. Okay, that's a bit difficult to show. You, know, you see CPL 13 means 13 characters at the first line and 46 characters in the second line. Okay, this is still too much. Um, let me just do this, having a third line. And now the problem is I have too many lines. Line um, per second is not, uh, is not permissible because what happens when you do this, you can go to the video, then there is a risk that the text columns will be too long and the text will be superimposed on a movie. And this is really annoying. Uh, just imagine you're watching a great movie like um, Rise of Skywalker, uh, maybe not the Rise of Skywalker, let's say Avengers Endgame, and then Thanos, the big fight scene is um, just disrupted by too, too much text. Yeah, I can overdo this so that you're going to see the problem. Yeah, so this is really nasty for the reader or for the watcher. So let me undo this and try to go back to the subtitling data window. So what is it saying now? 59 is definitely too much. So let me try to break here after the word Zeit. Ah, okay, now it looks better. No red flags. 28 characters in line one, 30 one characters in line two, and I have exactly two lines. Okay, that's great. Now I can just go back to the preview of the movie, and hmm, I think it doesn't look too bad. So this looks orderly. Yeah, I know this is a difficult topic because you need to know one or two things about uh, movies in this case and videos, but it's more and more common. I have noticed that some, quite some LSPs are turning to me, asking me, what's the best way to do subtitling. Uh, one trick I can give you here, there's one last thing. Yeah? Um, when I'm talking about business manager, business manager light can, as you can see, create invoices or quotes. I just need to get back to the, my view menu you know, and activate the business manager time tracking. Because you can imagine that um, doing subtitling isn't only about translation, it's a lot of work because you need to basically watch the movie. You need to uh, watch how many lines and characters, yeah? And this can be more uh, than just the typing work. Here, it might make sense to run the time tracker, so a sort of stopwatch of um, business manager light. So while I'm working, yeah, this time tracker is running in the background. I can go back to my subtitling. You will be safe here. Do this here. Sicher. Then you also check the subtitling data. Everything is in order. And in this case, it might make sense to agree with the customer. Okay, I'm not charging you for the words. I'm charging you on an hourly basis. And then you can pause if you need to take a coffee or some break, then you can start resume or you can just stop. And this is a record that is then added to your log. And based on this log, you can create your invoice based on an hourly rate. All right, I think I've hit the mark. So my um, talking hasn't overflown uh, well the limits of this presentation. I think the Mac thing was the only question I saw in the chat.
Yeah, and well, thank you very much for your attention. Have a great day and a great weekend. Bye.